Hey now everyone, my name is Nick and today we're taking a look at Concepts from Repost Productions. And this is a very hard game for me to describe. It is definitely a party game. It goes from 4 to 12 players. And I guess I would describe it as charades using only icons. There's a whole board full of different icons that are supposed to signify different things like person, fictional person, object, shapes, colors and you play in teams and on your team's turn you're going to use a bunch of different colored cubes and a big question mark and exclamation points to try to signify different things on the board that link up to the clue the word on the card that you're trying to get the other players to guess if that doesn't sounds like it doesn't make any sense well it really doesn't the first time you hear it because it's a very abstract game. The rules are very loose. It's supposed to be very free form as to how you interpret the different cubes and the things that you place out on the board. So I'll, let's go through a brief overview. I'll try my best to explain it to you. Then we're gonna come back and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of concept, and I say very brief because really the game is pretty simple. It's very abstract, and there's a lot of it that's open to interpretation. This is essentially a party game. It's for 4 to 12 players, although I can't imagine why you couldn't do more. It just might not be that fun because it might be too long. Uh, especially if you're not playing for points, it wouldn't really matter. So this is the main game board, and all these different symbols represent, as the name implies, different concepts. They can mean different things to different people. I mean, the colors are pretty obvious uh, when you think about it, but some of these other things are definitely open to interpretation. So for instance, a skull might mean a skull, but it might also mean death, or it might mean evil. That's up to you. You do have some little cheat sheets here, and it, my one knock against the components is that there's only two of these cheat sheets that will give you a better explanation of some of the different ideas behind each of these different things on the board but you don't even really need those because so many things are just up to your imagination and hoping that the people you're playing with can get what you're trying to throw out to them are you confused yet <laughs> well let's take a step back and explain just the basic gameplay so you're gonna uh, the rules are kind of loose they leave it open to you to decide how you want to play it, but what they recommend is that you break into teams. So the more the merrier, you'll break into teams of two, and if you have an odd number of players, then your teams might change as you go around the table. And that's fine, because what's going to happen is that you and your partner are going to draw one of these cards, one of the concept cards here, and on them, there are three sets of clues. Uh, they're from the top to the bottom, they go easy, moderate, and difficult. So the further down you go, the more hard, the harder it's supposed to be to get your, your clue across. And you have three choices for each one as well. Now again, you're going to decide, uh, is everyone going to be choosing difficult ones? Or do you let each team decide on the fly which one they want to do from each category? That's up to you and the other players at the table. But you pick one of these with your partner, and you'll decide either together how you're actually going to express your clue out on the board using only these little markers. You have a question mark to represent the main idea, and uh, these other little exclamation points to represent sort of sub-ideas, perhaps, and then cubes that correspond to each of those colors. How you use these is entirely up to you. How you place them may matter, and in the order that you place them, or it might not. That's just open to interpretation, like I've said before. So let's say that you wanted to do, oh, I don't know. Let's say, well, that's, uh, I don't like that card. <laughs> let's say Planet of the Apes, because I actually did this with a friend yesterday, and uh, it didn't go well for her. I mean, she's an incredibly smart person, but it she hadn't wrapped her head around how the game works. So I started off doing um, thing. So up here in the top corner, you have a box with a question mark. That could represent a thing. So then I was using green cubes to describe exactly what that thing was. So first of all, there's a marker up here that has like a little cartoonish depiction of Superman and a mermaid. So that indicates fictitious. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. But it could also mean superhero specifically. But in this case, it's fictitious. And uh, then um, I went ahead and made, I said that it was a place. But, you know, I was really thinking that it was planet. And uh, let's see, she still wasn't getting it at that point. Of course, there's not enough information. There's a symbol here that says animal. So I went ahead and used this blue marker to represent that animals are very important to this clue somehow and i kept going and said that i put blue on the symbol for king or ruler or president saying that suggesting or trying to get across the idea that the 
planet or place was ruled by animals. Bear in mind, you are not speaking. You are not allowed to speak during this. I think the rules say you may be able to like use some leading terminology like, yes, yes, but that's about it. In fact, we didn't even play that way, so I wouldn't suggest it. So keep going. Uh, I think at some point I might have done, you know, that it's also a movie. You know, those are the types of things that you do. And you there's not a time limit per se, but you should probably set a time limit. Uh, we were using five minutes, but however long you think it's comfortable to give people to try and guess your clue. And bear in mind that your team is coming up with this, but everyone else at the table is trying to guess your clue. Now, if they correctly guess your clue, in this case it was Planet of the Apes, then the person, the individual who guessed it, not the team, because teams are very loose, is going to gain one of the two point markers here, which is two light bulbs together. Uh, the winning team, the, the person who, ha who the team who actually had their clue guessed, each gets a point here. Now, that's an important distinction because what that means is that you are encouraged to, you're not trying to trip up the other players at the table. You want someone to guess your clue. That's why, you know, you're encouraged to be as creative as possible but and try to make it difficult just to be fun, but you want them to guess it. So, for instance, I, here, I, I won't tell you this time just to keep you in suspense, but because you'll probably get it right away. But one of the clues I had to give was, okay, they were a group of people. That, that kind of indicates family, but I was indicating it as a group of people. And I did fictitious. And then I took a different color cube, and I just put one on, like, red. Um, here. It was red and yellow and green uh, and blue and um, pink and I think I probably did uh, maybe or black and it only I mean I might have done one other thing but immediately someone said Power Rangers and they were right and then another one I had uh, Ninja Turtles which was even easier I did the same thing with the colors but then I used turtles so it can be and that was supposed to be a moderate clue but the easy ones are really easy I'll show you some more examples it might be something like uh, here, let me focus that a bit it might be uh, well Little House on the Prairie is under easy god I would think that's kind of hard that's the thing these are kind of uneven but um, in the moderate category Tinkerbell that's kind of hard but then down in the difficult it might be Nightmare Before Christmas I've seen Age of Enlightenment for difficulty <laughs> for difficult ones uh, but then there's also Nutella I think I don't know I had problems getting Nutella um, Sword though that's fairly simple um, another example easy one here Bank but then like under moderate Archimedes huh I don't <laughs> but then down at the bottom, Billy Jean or Eureka. I, but the thing is, even if it's a really difficult one, if you're playing with a lot of people, it's likely that someone will be able to figure it out. And it's all about how you put your tokens down. It's all about the order you place them down. It's all about leading people along a path and trying to make them circle back around to the idea you're trying to get across. It's very loose. It's very fluid. But uh, spoiler alert, it's very fun. Now let's go ahead and get to my final thoughts and I'll tell you why I like concepts. It's funny, in the instructions for concept, the first page is just concept in a minute. And it's supposed to essentially teach you the game just by showing you some examples. And I felt like an idiot after I read it because it felt like it's something that was very simple that I should understand right off the bat, but I didn't. I couldn't wrap my head around it because I'm not used to thinking in such abstract terms, especially for a party game. You think of a party game, it's supposed to be very simple and easily laid out. You get just got like one page of rules. Thinking of any game like Wits and Wagers or say anything, it's just very easy to pick up. But concept was sort of billed as sort of the thinking man's party game. And once I did wrap my head around those concepts and I was actually sitting down at the table and playing with people, everything sort of snapped into focus and I was really intrigued and charmed by the game. I would easily say, even after just a few plays, this is one of my favorite party games because the like I was saying, it's a very simple game once you get it, but there's enough depth here that I think anyone can enjoy it. There's a lot of like really, you know, steadfast, you know, somber Euro game players who don't want to play party games like The Resistance or Werewolf or even say anything or Wits and Wagers. And I get that. I get that. I mean, that's it's just a different ballpark for them. But I think this is a game that has a sort of universal appeal. And it's just the idea of having to use not just your imagination, but being e efficient is the word that someone in our group used to describe the game. Efficiency is key. Getting across an idea, only using the icons, but doing it quickly. You know, 
the rules are kind of fluid. You can kind of make up your own rules as you go. We were putting a five minute time limit on someone having to guess, which is probably too long, actually. You can could, you could make up whatever time limit you want. That's sort of the key to the game, is you can make up any rules you want as a fly. You don't even have to keep track of points if you don't want to. Uh, but you have that option, and I think that that's a good thing to have in place for people who don't, they, they need more of a game to this party game. It can't be too abstract for those people. So you have that idea that you can just make up your own rules and put as many rules in it as you want. But regardless of what rules you use, the game is all about just thinking creatively and how to express yourself and get your point across. And because each of the different cards in the game has three different levels with three different answers for each level, well, first off, that adds a lot of variety to the game. It's gonna be a long time before you see all the different answers, but even so, each person on the fly can decide what difficulty level they wanna use. You could just make a blanket rule that everyone uses the hardest or the easiest or the mid-level responses, but having the flexibility to let people choose the clue that they want is really key to the enjoyment of this game because not everyone is going to be able to get across the Age of Enlightenment. That's one of the responses in the game. I looked at that and I was like, I'm what? So I went with Ninja Turtles. <laughs> that was much easier to get across. There's a turtle right there on the board. But people have that flexibility and I think that's a really cool thing. I think this would be great for kids. I think it's great for adults. I think it's great for, it's a great gateway game. Uh, not just to party games, but once you get people thinking in those sort of terms of efficiency and using the, you know, using the different colors to get across different points and adding variety to the different clues that you have, that's a good gateway into getting people into the mindset of you know Euro games or more complex strategy games. So I think this game hits out of the park in all in, in, in all respects and it's actually it's been nominated for the Spiel des Jahres and before I played the game and I saw that just knowing what I knew about it at the time I was like huh really like a party game but I think I get it now because it's not just a party game it's some people compare it to an activity but it's definitely something that's going to get people thinking uh, have a good time but also feel like you've actually accomplished something that's concepts from Repost Productions. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care. Hmm? Yeah. But... I film. <laughs> you should be on camera, come on. Hi, Board Game Brawl subscribers. Yes. I'm up to 2,700. 2,700.